Hi, my friends. <laughs> this is Jay, and this is Jay's Knit and Pearl Jam. And I'm back. I'm telling you, the last two months, I have just been out of control. Or I felt like things that was going on around me had me out of control. I just couldn't keep up, or I didn't know what was going to happen next. And it was just like, once one thing falls, you know, or, or something happens. So, I just felt like, oh man, I just can't seem to get myself together. But guess what? Jay's back. <laughs> I'm back. May came in really nice and soft. Uh, you know, of course, a lot of you are having some really horrible weather. And it is moving this way, so I'm filming this before Mother's Day. But by the time Mother Mother's Day gets here, Sunday, uh, we will be in, the storm would have made it to Georgia in the east. So, <coughs> I'm just, so I, I just wanted to, you know, go ahead and, and now that I can feel like I'm calmed down and I just want to knit everything and crochet all the designs. I just can't, I'm just so excited about some of the things I'm going to, you know, the simple things that I make and design to share with you for the summer. You know, I like my simple summer things. <laughs> so, uh, oh, did you get my Happy Mother's Day card? I know, I know, I know, I know, I know some of you saying, Jay, that was a big meatloaf. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's the way I took the picture. But yes, it was a large meatloaf. But I'm I'm not like a real southern cook, a real cook from scratch. I have a little system and I like to cook. I cook large, but I don't cook a lot of different things. I'm not one of those people who cook, you know how on some holidays people have cheese and macaroni, potato salad, uh you know, they'll have uh, green beans, and then they'll have turnip greens, and they have peas and carrots, and they'll have, you know, the whole shebang. <laughs> well, I'm not one of those cooks. I'm a cook that I cook in threes or fours. I know that sounds crazy. I like things in threes or fours. So, for instance, I'll have a meat, which was my meatloaf. And then I will have at least one starch that could be potatoes or rice or, you know, something else, uh, stuffing or something like that. And then I'll have veggies. Now, veggies I splurge on. I may have, you know, I'll have a combination of vegetables like broccoli, carrots, cauliflower. You know how it comes in the, in the pack. Or I'll put cauliflower and peas together. Or I'll put zucchini and squash together, you know, in, with some onions and things like that. But... I normally, like I say, I don't cook a lot, but I cook big because we like leftovers. And then I can always share with whoever comes. The kids come, I, they can take some to work. Here, slice up that meatloaf. Here, take some of this to work. I can share it with my little neighbor next door. You know, I just, I just, I cook large, but not a lot of items. And uh, so I knew. As soon as I put the picture up, I said, oh, they're going to go, Jay, that was such a big meatloaf. Who, who's going to eat it? <laughs> but like I said, when you start slicing and dicing and giving it to different people, you'll see. I only cook, I like I said, I cook large because we love leftovers. So I cook on Sundays, and I cook either Wednesday or Thursday, either one of those days. And then I, have the, I don't have to cook the rest of the week because I have leftovers we like leftovers and like I said and I have plenty to share <laughs> so if you were worried about that big meatloaf don't worry it will be and then it's oh meatloaf sandwiches you know you go get the big Kaiser buns and then you put all kind of things on and then you put your pickle on the side and your little uh, we like uh, tortilla like chips instead of potato chips and because a lot of it has less sodium and, uh, you know, have your water or my husband drinks tea or whatever. Or he drinks a lot of that uh, cranberry juice stuff. It's supposed to be good for men or whatever. <laughs> anyway, so see, that makes a great 
sandwich when we're just sitting around or, or you know, he's just watching the game or something. I don't have to do a lot of cooking. So, but, <laughs> while I'm not cooking, I'm back here. I'm working. I don't know. For some reason, once May came in and things settled back down, I just wanted to knit all the things or crochet everything I put my hands on. Every design, every stitch. I was looking through some of my, you know, just looking through my stash, books, and yarn. And I came across some stitch books I haven't reviewed yet. They're not new. You know, they've been around a while. But I haven't given you a review on them. And it's some really good books and got some beautiful stitches in it. And so I thought, you know what? Let's just, I'm going to just, I'm going to see how much I can just keep going. Just no matter how hot. I told someone um, that sent me a message. I says, listen, as the summer heats up, we're going to stay calm, cool. And just knit on or crochet on, no matter what the temperature outside. <laughs> Even if I have to sweat this year. You know, last year, oh, mercy. You know, I sit by my window. I have an air conditioning unit. That covers up the air conditioning unit. But I can't turn it on and film. So I have to sit. And last year, the crickets were just about every video of mine. <laughs> Where well, crickets at night or birds in the daytime, we can't get away. My husband has a green thumb, not for blooming flowers, not for, but he has a green thumb for shrubbery. No matter what he cuts, and he just sticks it in the ground, it grows into massive bushes. I don't mean they grow into little cute, little small little plants. No, huge bushes. <laughs> They're all around our house. We have a sanctuary of birds, every, just all the birds I can just sit and look. Sometimes we even have hawks. Sometimes I'm sitting here and all of a sudden I can tell when a hawk comes by because the shadow is big. And uh, have hawks and, of course, you know, your, your crickets at night and your butterflies. So I thought, oh, God, I'm going to burn up in here. <laughs> so maybe that'll make me go a little faster. <laughs> but anyway... So, <clears throat> when I look back, when I started to think about what I wanted to make, looking through some of my the stitch books, I decided, just like I just finished that white knitted sweater, it was a deja vu. It went back to one that I had designed some years ago. Well, you know what? I realized I have not done this design in about two, maybe three years. And I'll, have, I'll find the video. This is Jay's Cross My Heart Wrap. This is one that I made back in the day when I was really into watching tennis. I don't know, since uh, Serena and Venus, and you know, they've kind of dropped off a little bit because, you know, uh, both of them are just getting older and everything. And, and uh, they probably love, enjoy living their lives now more, you know, not having to just travel and be somewhere playing tennis. And, of course, Serena has a baby and she's married. And so kudos to them. So I've kind of taken a little hiatus, too. But when I was watching them, you know, this is how I started making this little wrap. Uh, I have a knitted one I call a tennis. It was a tennis wrap. And then I decided to do a crochet one. And this is one of, this is a version of that wrap. Now, when I started, it was more like a collar. It went maybe halfway down the back, and then the little ties came in front, and you tied it just like this. Well, when Judy and I, remember my friend Judy, when we were knitting in the mall, she said, well, let's make a, she said she loved it. She made a, a couple, she was kind of like a tester. She said, I like it, but I want them larger, more like a sweater, and then have these larger. So, we, I said, okay, I'll just change the design. And so, this is really Judy's idea of this wrap to make it larger more like a sweater. Now let me show you how it looks. Alright, now you have to excuse if I'm shining. <laughs> Let my little light shine. <laughs> okay, so here it is. You have some nice ties, but I want to show you the back and of course I'm going to give you a nice overview. But on this one, And here's some of the ties. And you can turn it around. 
Now, what's so nice about this, you know, here in, here in the metro Atlanta area, you know, I'm, I don't live in Atlanta. I live way north of Atlanta, but we have a lot of outdoor activities. We have a lot of uh, uh, different um, uh, music venues. They have amphitheaters. Uh, if you like baseball, you know we have the new SunTrust uh, Braves Baseball Park uh, uh, closer to Atlanta. Um, be great if you were going to a night game and you just needed a little something or to one of the jazz festivals. They're having jazz festivals down in the city of Atlanta. I think down at the Piedmont Park. A lot of people go. Um, then, of course, just plain going to the movie, going out with some girls, but not casual. Sometimes it's just too hot to have a shawl. You know, but this, you could easily enjoy this or use this as a simple little take-along. What do you think? So I thought, all right, I've got the, I already have, you know, I've already, um, you know, shared it with you. So now I'll just find a new stitch, and that's what I've done. I found a new stitch, put something a little different with it, and I thought, I'm going to share it with my friends. I hope you give this a try. It's a fun crochet. It's easy, no matter what age, and guess what? It's a stash buster, no matter what. You can use any size yarn you want depending on your, uh, you know, where you live, your temperature, you know, the, the weather. You can do this in as, if you a small person, you want to work in threads or, or sock yarn or really small yarn, number three yarns, it'll work. Because, you know, the way I crochet, in which I'll get to when we get to the counter. Or this is number four. This is number four weight. But you can use the size hook that you like and the yarn and you can look in your stash you don't need that much depending on how large or how long you want to make it it's all up to you <laughs> so i just want to come on and like i said just let you know how you know i'm glad that we're back together i'm glad i'm here i'm glad i i feel more in control now i'm ready to get busy and see how much we can do. You know in the summertime, Jay likes simple summer, you know, shells, tops, cross my heart wraps, sweaters. So let's just see what we can do. Let's see how much we can get done. Let's just see how much we can enjoy the fellowship. So without further ado, let's get busy. Jay's Crochet Deja Vu Cross Your Heart Wrap. Just for my friends. <laughs> All right, be back in just a minute. All right, I'm over at my counter, and I want to give you a quick overview, overview <laughs> of this pretty, simple summer lace. And this is my cross uh, my heart wrap so of course here's the back this is where we start it's just a nice back square of nothing but pretty and it's real simple lace once you see the little simple uh crochet pattern you you know i'm sure you'll recognize it and i try to use a simple lace where i have just a repeat of row one and two or maybe three just to keep it simple so that i can concentrate on the design how to design it and the steps I need to share with you so that you can repeat those steps and get a good result. So that's why when I do my designing, I try to keep the stitch very simple, easy to remember, easy to uh, repeat. So of course, we're gonna start at the very bottom. This is where we start. Now let me just kind of move things, kind of re, kind of move things out of the way yeah that's great okay of course we start at the bottom and we're gonna make a long chain because that's just you know how I do my crocheting and then from that long chain we will actually start to work the uh, this lace stitch like I saying it's only like two rows for this one so really easy and once um, we work a few of the repeats then I will show you how to kind of decide or to measure or how to you know 
decide on how many you need to fit your body. Easy peasy. We've done it before if you've worked with me. If you're not, welcome to Jay's Knitting Pearl Jam and to my world of crocheting. <laughs> I crochet by the number of repeats in most of my project and not trying to figure out how many chains. All right, so then we'll work up, 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 up to a nice, you know, kind of a square effect, depending on how tall you are. And then we'll, we'll work up so far and we'll measure it up to our bodies and see from the back, from where you want it to stop to um, just below the top of your shoulders, about um, two, three inches before you get to your shoulders. Then we will go into a double crochet, just a simple double crochet stitch. In fact, I tried two or three other stitches and I didn't like it, so I'd pull it out and then I'd try another stitch, thinking I'd put a little more zest to it. But you know what? It came down to just a plain regular, after trying two or three different design stitches, it came down to a double crochet would work the best. And then that way I could keep or make sure I kept my border, which we will have, as we work down each front tie. Now, when I turn it over, you know, you're walking in the mall. Well, of course, all the lace is on the back where people can see it as you're walking in the mall or walking wherever you're going. Late night baseball game or to the park. And then when you in the front, we will actually create a neckline right there. I'm going to pull in just a little bit now so we can see the neckline. Now pull it down. So as we turn... As we work up the back and turn to the front, now we're going to work a beautiful neckline here. And as we come over the shoulders in our double crochet, we will start, we'll work so many inches over and then we'll start to decrease these, these ties or front panels here <clears throat> to form these pretty ties. What do you think of that? And you see, I added some fringe at the end, just because I could. <laughs> and then I'll tell you some secrets once we, or some little tips, once we get to the front. So, that's the simple, I figured after such a long project of the Love Knot jacket, you know, a simple project, and this just, to me, this was just right on cue to do this. And of course, you can always add you a flower. Or a beautiful pen. You know, Jay's about the flowers and the pens. <laughs> See, can I pull that down a little bit? There you go. You know, I'm all about the flower and the pen. So, I think we're ready for show you the supplies. We'll get started. And I, this is going to be a go-to. Because it's very simple. I kept it simple so that I could... So that... I can share it, but that you would have good results too. Back in just a minute. Okay, let let me uh, go over the simple supplies. This is a simple project for to use with simple supplies. It's a great stash buster. Uh, if you have some leftover, maybe you've worked on some simple afghans, you know, um, you might have a couple of skeins left over. This is perfect. Or you just come across a good little sale. Um, you know, you don't need anything really. This is supposed to be easy wear, so you want something easy care. That's all it is. A simple way to use up good yarn. Uh, and uh, you'd have a beautiful project. Well, of course, it, right off the bat, you know I always use Karen Simply Soft. It's just one of my go-to yarns. I use it on everything, whether I'm knitting or crocheting. It's just a great yarn. I got it in so I got such a... I got kabukus. <laughs> Sometimes I forget how many, you know what colors I have, and I'll go back to the store and I'll buy four more of the same colors. So I wind up a lot of times with eight, nine skeins of one color, but I, you know what? I keep it because I know I'm going to use it on down the road. So I don't care, but it's one of my favorite yarns. Okay, now the next, uh, oh, and these are just some of the colors. I don't know why I have two out. These are just some of the colors I just grabbed up out of my stash, stash busting time. 
All right. And if you if you're a senior, if you do a lot of Afghans and you have a lot of this Hobby Lobby yarn, I love this yarn. Like I said, this project is easy wear, easy care. Uh, you know, you don't have to spend anything uh, uh, a large amount. But if you do, you can do that also. It's up to you. But this is a way to use up yarn. This is really nice. Uh, just some. I love this yarn. You need gonna need about two skeins. I'd have two skeins on hand. You know, could be left over from another project. But that's some. Here's some I bought at Michael's. You know, I'm always buying, I don't know why I had a coupon. Me and those coupons. Okay, this I never used it. I have never used Lion Brand's Pound of Love. <laughs> oh, but look, it's got a cute African pattern on the label. Okay, so it's a number four weight. Now, all of these are number four weights. You know that. Number four in the window. Uh, medium weight. And this huge thing has uh, over a thousand yards. Well, you know, you probably can get two out of this one. <laughs> you know, you probably can get, if you're a small size, you could probably get two. One for yourself and one to share. <laughs> okay. All right. But anyway, this is, I've just put, I just went through my stash people just to kind of pull out some yarn to let you see. Not a heavy number four, you know, like, um. Homeland or something that's heavy or any of uh, like Vanna's that's a little too heavy for this project But anything regular weight number four yarn. All right, and the yarn I Settle on is one that I'm really using a lot on because it knits up beautiful This yarn really knits up nice, but then I'm finding that it crochets up nice, too This is premier every day not the baby on this one. We're going to use the every day the number four weight and on, on this project, on any of these yarns, even though they may call for an I hook, we are going to go down to an H. An H hook for this project. In fact, several projects coming up lately, I'm going to be using the H hook. It just gives a nicer, finer look, and it looks really nice. So, these are just some of the yarns. You've got stuff in your stash. And like I said, if it's for something really special and you want to use nicer yarn... Some from the knit shop or, or you know, some hand dyed, feel free. But get it so that you can use a number H hook, you know, so it'll go just fine with that. So I'm just using my regular clover number H hook. All right, now, real quick, the stitch. I'm moving right along. I want to get this because I want to get to stitching. Okay, so on this, look, bam, book we've used before. That's a little sun shining on it, coming through the blinds, but that's okay. It's the complete book of crochet stitch designs, 500 classic and original patterns by Linda Scaper. And if you've been with me, you know I, I bought this book on Amazon. It has a companion book of borders, but this one I use more than anything. And the reason I use it, not because the stitches are just, you know, really just over the top and very intricate no they're very basic stitches it's just that she's compiled compiled them all in one book place in one book so instead of taking me days looking through five or six books trying to decide and then looking again and then looking again I can look in this one book and find what I need you know and then if I don't find what I need then I can go look in the other books so if you have this book her books are set up uh by numbers. The stitches all have numbers and not pattern, not names. So in this book, I'm on page 144. Page 144, and the stitch number is 179. Right there. 179. And if you look right here, I used to do this all the time and I got lazy, but if I can remember, I used to put stars on any stitch I use out of any book. That would always let me know when I came across it again, this was a good stitch, Jay, or it was really nice, or that project worked out nice, or that stitch looked good. You ought to use it again. So that's why I put stars. And I even put two stars on this one. <laughs> so here we go. Here's the stitch book that we're taking the stitch out of. Of course, I'm going to modify the stitch to get it into our design. So the next step is let's start stitching on our crochet H hook and the yarn of your choice. Back in just a minute. All right, so now I wanna get started. First of all, if you're new 
to crocheting with me. I crochet just a little different. I mean, my, I do the same steps, but the way I figure out how uh, how to measure. All right, most most of uh, patterns, you know, they have the multiple of the chains. How many chains do you need? And that's what I use when I'm working on my knitted projects. But in crochet, I found a long time ago that if I would concentrate on how many repeats I needed, it I had a great fit. It it fit better. I didn't have to worry about the chains. And as I, like I said, we're designing this, I didn't have to stop and start over because I didn't have enough or I changed something, you know. So I simply tried to crochet by the mo by the number of repeats. So the first thing you'll say, well how, well, how long do I make the chain? If I don't count chains, how will I know? Well, we're going to fit the part of the body. You can either, I'm going to use my midriff. That's from my one side of my waist across my belly button to the front side of my, to the opposite side. You might want to use your bust line from under one arm across your bust line to the, under the opposite arm. Either way, you can have you can count those repeats to see what fits your body across the front. Um, so what you need to do is make a chain as at least as long as your waist or your bust line, and then go ahead and add about that much more again, maybe uh, 24 more inches, something like that, so that you won't run out of chains. Because I don't know how many chains we'll need. I may change you know when you're designing things so you want enough chains and you want chains left and when we're through with the whole project it's like magic we take a loose those chains and it's done <laughs> and the yarn that's left that we cut off and don't use you can sew with it so it's not really a waste and you don't waste a lot of time counting and recounting we're just going to find the number of repeats now let me show you the repeat how to make this simple repeat and then I'll show you how to count again first of all we're going to start we've got a long chain longer than what we need this is row one this is the right side of this stitch you saw the stitch in the book now I like to add I have to modify and add things to my crochet just like I do in knitting and a lot of times I'll use it like a border so on my border for this uh, project I'm going to count over to the fourth chain from the hook one two three and in number four I'm going to put a double crochet just like that then in the next stitch I'm going to add a double crochet this is just a US double crochet I don't know what it is in the others but you you understand you'll know all right People, I know you're smart, so you know you know what I mean. All right, the next thing I need to do, I need a separation. So I am going to chain one in her in her uh, chart. There is no chain one, but I'm chaining one right there. That separates what I'm adding. These three border stitches. Now the pattern starts. I'm going to skip three on the bottom. One two, three. I'm skipping three stitches. One, two, three. In the next chain, or three chains, in the next chain I'm going to do three double crochets. That's one. That's two. And this is three. Really simple. She has four. I didn't need four. I wanted to make it simple. I have three double crochets. Now I'm going to chain three. One, two, three three easy peasy three double crochets three chains now I need a double crochet she went back into this same chain but I'm not going to do that I'm going to go to the chain right next to that one so I'm going right here and do a double crochet on this foundation of first row row number one so there we go that's what we have that's what you should have so far now separation again chain one skip three one two, three. In the next chain, I want a V-stitch. For this uh, particular project, it's a double crochet, chain one, another double crochet in the same chain. You know, V-stitches can be different, you know, different number of chains, but this is a chain one, then another double crochet. So there's a V-stitch. That's what you have now. That's the repeat. Simple. There's only two rows two rows <laughs> all right separation 
chain one. Skip three on the bottom, one, two, three. Okay, I'm going back to the three double crochets. Just like this. One, two, and three. All right, chain three. See, it's a no-brainer. You'll know right away. Chain one, two, three. Now I need another double crochet, but on this foundation of first row, I'm going to use a stitch right next to it, the chain right next to it. So I put the double crochet there. Chain one. Skip how many? Three on the bottom. One, two, three. Now I need another V-stitch. Chain one. So that's a double crochet, chain one, double crochet makes the V-stitch. There we go. All right, chain one, skip, one, two, three. I need the three double crochets. One, two, and three. Here we go. Whoops, don't want to go through. It's getting a little humid up in here. <laughs> okay, chain three, one, two, three. All right, double crochet in the chain right next to that large one right there. Go to the next one. Double crochet. Chain one. Skip three. One, two, three. V-stitch. Chain one. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Chain one for separation. Skip three. One, two, three. I'll get ready to stop now. We're going to look. I just want to make sure I can show you, have enough so I can show you how to, how you're going to put it up against your body and figure out how many you need. Chain three, one, two, three. This is row one now, the right side. After I chain three, I need another double crochet, but not don't put it in the hole like she did in the same one. I'm going to the chain right next to it. So I just go into a double crochet there. Chain one for separation. All right, skip three. One, two, three. I need another double crochet. Chain one, double crochet. A V-stitch. This is what you have so far. Just take your time and, and look at it, and it's row one, the right side. All right, so far, let's see how many repeats we have. Counting these, these triple crochets, one, two, three, four. Let me do five, just so that I can show you what to do next. All right, chain one, now skip three. One, two, let's see, one, two, three, and then I'm going to, <coughs> excuse me. I'm going to do three double crochets right here, two and three. Okay, chain three, one, two, three. And then I need that last double crochet in the chain right next to that one. So I go over here. Now, let's count again. Let's see if I have, how many repeats do I have? We're counting this as repeat one. Okay, two, three, four, five. So I have five repeats on this sample, and this is enough to show you the next step. Does that make sense so far? But now, in order to end this row, we're still on row one, I have to end, end the row just like I began the row. I need a chain one and three double crochets. I started with the three double crochets, not with the V-stitch, and I need to end with the three double crochet section, chain one, and then those three. So here we go. I'm over here. I just did that last repeat. There, there you go right there. See it? All right. Now chain one, skip three, just like we started. One, two, three. Now I need three double crochets for a border on this side. That's one, two, Three. Oh, I feel a little air coming in. So now this end matches the end that we started. 
and I have my number of repeats in between that I'm getting ready to measure on my body. When we get ready to turn the work, it will be row two. But right now, let me show you what to do on row one. All right, here's your body. We're going to borrow this a minute. I'm going to go ahead and move this. Here's your body. <laughs> All right, on this body, like I said, you can use your bust line from under one arm across your bust, have on a good bra to under the opposite arm, or I'm using my midriff from just one side of my body to across my belly button, across to the other side. Of course, I have to do it in the front, even though this goes in the back because I can't, I can't see my back. <laughs> so all you're gonna do is hold up and see how many of these repeats does it take. You don't have to worry about counting these little borders. I just simply want you to count these, this stitch here, the three double crochet stitch. One, two, go over to the three double crochets, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, from one side of the front of your body across the front to the other opposite side. All right, so on my, on the real one, on my real one, I'm just going to show you so you can see it before we turn. Uh-oh, y'all hear that? I just dropped the book. That's a big book. One time I dropped it on my toe. <laughs> I wasn't saying pretty words. <laughs> I was so mad. That book was heavy. Okay, let me see if I'm on here. Okay. That's good enough. We're just, just I'm just going to do it real quick. All right, so here, of course, here's my little... Here's my little repeat. Once you get enough of them, you're going to see it lines up like in rows. You can see all the V-stitches all line up like separation. That's what they. That's what the V-stitches are doing. They're separating. Here's a repeat right here. So I'm going to count those repeats. And I have one, starting at the bottom, one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine. I have nine repeats for my size, and I represent the large to one X. So I'm thinking that maybe a small to medium, you may have seven repeats. Seven repeats of what I just shared with you of the stitch. And if you are 2x to 3x, you can go anywhere from 11 to 13. You know, you can just, or you can go up, you know, you can continue to go up to the next odd number. But the odd number works the best because the odd number will give you a center. It will tell you where the, you can be able to find the center. And we need that when we get ready to, to separate each front. I need to have a center point. Does that make sense? Okay, so for me, on my original, I did nine repeats. So now, let me switch to a, let's go to row two, so you'll see exactly what row, how to work row two. I'll be right back because I want the rows separate. Be right back in a minute. All right, so just uh, make sure we're on the same page. We have finished row one. And you need to find how many repeats on row one so that you will know where to end so that you can make this end, just like I shared with you, to match this end. But you have to do it on row one, the right side, so you'll know how many repeats to continue to, you know, to keep working. Anything left and change, don't worry about them. We'll take it out later. So finally, you come up to a number, like I said, yeah. Um, I just give some suggestions since my I'm large to one X. I my I had nine repeats of this um, stitch. Maybe small to medium, maybe seven, like I said, and two X or three X. Any starting at eleven or thirteen, or if you uh, you know you need more, you know just go up to the next odd number, thirteen, fifteen, and so forth. All right, so now. Now that you got an idea of your chains and of your repeats, you work that number of repeats. Make sure you do the border. Now I'm at the end. Now we need to turn the work. 
and I simply chain three, one, two, three, which is the beginning. As we turn the work, now we're on row two. Row two is just the back of the work. There's nothing, this, I said there was two rows. Really, there's just one row, and you just work these two rows, the, the one row back and forth, a right side and a wrong side. So now we're on the wrong side, row two. I've chained three, and then I have to stack those double crochets just on top of each other, just like this. Okay, and now we're just going to read. I'm going to take off this ring. Now we're just going to read our own work going backwards. You know there's a chain one there, so I chain one. Then in this space here, in this large space, I'm going to do the three double crochets. Very simple stitch. A lot of you have done it in afghans, you've done it in other things, in scarves. It's no big deal. So, there's the three double crochets. Now chain three. One, two, three. And then put the last double crochet in that same space. Just like that. Now chain one. Move over to the V-stitch. Right there, you can see the first V-stitch. Now, just stack a V-stitch on top of a V-stitch. One double crochet, chain one, and then another double crochet. There you go. V-stitch on top of V-stitch. Let me pull up some yarn and I'll do a few more. All right, then of course, chain one. We're back to our repeat uh, stitch. With that large space, you're going to put the three double crochets there. It's a little loose, you can see how. That's why I, I dropped down to an H, and I made it so loose and large, and it just did not, I didn't li like it, so I pulled it out and went down to an H. Now chain three, one, two, three, and then put that extra double crochet in the same space right there. It's just an offset shell stitch. It's nothing, you know, but it look good. it looks good in this particular project in the back. Chain one. Go over to the next V-stitch, which is right there. There's the opening. And stack V-stitch, double crochet. Chain one, double crochet on top. Now, chain one and continue across. Three double crochets. That's two. Now three. And then chain three. One, one, two, three. And then that extra double crochet goes in that same large space. Now chain one. Move across to the V-stitch right there. There's a, there's a space right there. All right, V-stitch on top of V-stitch. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Right, oops, my yarn split there. Let me, let me pull it up. See, can I get it back together? Chain one, now V-stitch. Chain one. And one, two, three. One, two, three, chain three. One, two, three. Double crochet, the extra double crochet goes there. That same space. Okay, let's see. Oh, now chain one. Now I'm over to the V-stitch. And I see that I'm coming up to my last repeat. Of course, you're going to have, you know, the number you figured out. Oops. Double crochet on the V-stitch, chain one, and then double crochet. And you're going to be working your way, chain one, to get to the last repeat right there. Of course, you're... Your chain, your work is much longer. Okay, 
three double crochets right there, chain one, two, three, put the extra double crochet here, all right, chain one, I have to skip all the way over, there's that chain one, I have to skip all the way over to the border right in here, so I just double crochet into that double crochet, and into the next one, and the last one I go into the post, I hold it up, does that make sense, can you see it, alright before we chain 3 and turn and we're back on row 1 again, this is when you take your little, uh, you just it's just a lot easier if you just know what, which side is the front, which is the back. So I grab up some contrasting yarn. I make like a little fringe like that and then make a loop with my crochet hook and pull the tails through the loop. It's marked. Now I can really just kind of work through. Chain one, two, three, turn the work. And we have a midnight train in Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the other, other week, um, uh, I was, uh, I think a message Elaine was, uh, Elaine out of Washington sent me a message, you know, telling me how much she enjoyed the tutorial and everything. And I, she said, well, and I mentioned on the YouTube, you know, it was like um, a rainy night in Georgia. I said, oh, it's a rainy night here in Georgia. And she said that song got stuck in her head. <laughs> a rainy night in Georgia. <laughs> she said that song got stuck in her head. <laughs> oh, that reminded me the reason I'm laughing so hard because one time, okay, now I'm just chaining three turns and now I'm on row one. I'm on the front side again. And it's the same thing. Do the three double crochets as the border to get started right there chain one now I look for the first big space right there I put three double crochets <laughs> and because uh, I, I you know I didn't have room and I, I didn't tell her but I think I told this one time in another uh, video that one time I was over at Michael's I know exactly where I was I was back there in the yard aisle and um, they had some good music that weekend or something well, I'm telling you, they put on a Barry White, and that song got stuck in my head. <laughs> I couldn't do it. Everywhere I went, I could not get that song out of my head. Can't get enough of your love, baby. <laughs> I was like, please stop, Barry White, get out of my head. <laughs> so that, that's why it made me laugh. So, okay, I did that. Then chain one, and then I go over to the V stitch. Okay, so now, so that just made me laugh so bad. I can just see her everywhere she's going at the grocery store, <laughs> her rain's having that song. <laughs> well, now tonight it was a train in Georgia. <laughs> okay, so that's the stitch. You know how many repeats you need now so that you can continue to work back and forth, row one, right side, wrong side, you just work back and forth, make sure you're picking up the border, keeping it nice and straight, keep going. Now, on the original one, now you're going to work until you feel that you're up towards your shoulders. On this original one, I worked the lace about 17 inches from here to here, Let's see if I'm on camera. I may not have... Nope, I got to back out. Sorry. So from... From the top of the lace to the bottom, it's about... I worked about 17 inches. Or you can count the little things. And I had... It's easy to just count one row. Sometimes trying to count this offset. It's offset. So I just... Look. I go to the edge, I'm going to show you, just so that I can just kind of see and, and make a note of it in case you want to make another one or you have another idea. But I just start on the edge right here and I just count the ones on the edge. One, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven, and I had 13. That's, I'm just giving you an idea. You can have it. Yours could be short. You may want yours to the middle of the back. Mine came, you know, uh, a little longer. It stops more at the bottom near my waist of your back. So you know exactly how many repeats you need across now of this stitch. And now you need to work however many inches you need to get up to your shoulders. Inches or you can count like I showed you how to count. That's the next step. Like I say, it's near the midnight hour, so I will let you work, and then I will come back probably tomorrow evening, tomorrow night, and we will, once we get up to the top, don't forget, and move your little, as you're working, continue to move, well, I took mine out because I was, uh, because I wore it for the picture. Here's the inside. Yeah, this is the wrong side. Okay. Make sure that you leave your little inside mark, uh, you know, keep your, I had to wear mine for the camera, so I had taken my little, so just move it up, or add another one, just so that you'll know which side, when we get ready to work. So now you'll just keep working, 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 and when we come back, we are going to, I'm going to show you how to make this, how to stop it, how to make the back, start the neckline. In fact, we're, let me turn it around. In fact, we'll be right here, ready to work the neckline. And I tried several stitches and took them all loose and I wind up with just plain double crochet. But I tried single crochet, I tried some other stitches for this little section here to make it kind of, you know, make it different or pretty or lacy-like. Well, at the end, I pulled it all out and went right back to double crochet. So, I will see you back once you reach however many inches or however many rows you want to work for this back piece. Oh, it's pretty. I hope you get a, I hope you pick out a pretty color. All right, take care. See you tomorrow. All right, I'm back, and I hope that you have had time to crochet uh, your back lace uh, portion of this little wrap to however many inches you want it to go from wh wherever you wanted your your uh, wrap to stop from your waist or mid back or wherever to up near the top of your shoulders. I did about 17 inches, and so it's just everyone, you know, can decide how how long you want it to make this piece. We have the number of repeats. Everyone had figured that out. Now all you had to do was just crochet back and forth, back and forth. Now we're at, we're ready to stop this lace and put in the double crochet part so that we can set aside our neck and then start to work one right, one front, and, a, and the left front. So as we go down um, the front of the wrap. So in order to do that, let me show you how I do it if you're new to crocheting with me. Okay, now we're going to have to pretend a little bit on this because I had already had that one done, so I'm going to pull this yarn out. I'm going to lay this aside. And I'm going to get some yarn. Now, this is a little sample that I've worked up just to, because we're going to have to pretend I didn't have time to redo another one. Um, because I'm going to do a knit one. <laughs> so, uh, in fact, some of my stitches are coming out. Let me just put these stitches back while we're talking. So, I thought, well, you know what? I need to go ahead and do a knit one. But now, I got so many tutorials on the needle, people. I, I'm telling on the needle and on the hook. I just finished another crochet. All right, so I'm just going to just kind of stop this because we're pretending now. All right, so here we go. This is what where you started on the just like the original. This is where you started. Here's the here's the chain right down here. Here's those extra chains that I didn't use. Right now you got to pretend this is 17 inches or 18 inches or however long you wanted your back because I want to show you how uh, to separate at the top. So with my crochet in my crocheting world, once you 
finish how long you want this piece. Then you, we take this edge, the original chain edge, and I turn it around so now the bottom becomes a top. Does that make sense? Most people have been working with me. You know automatically that's how I turn it around. Now the bottom becomes the top of the piece. And now here is the bottom of your uh, wrap. Of course, you, like I said, we got to pretend this is 17 or 18, however many inches you want. Now I'm going to show you how we're going to... We're going to now work across some double crochets back and forth to stop this lace and to get ready to separate for a front, a right front, a neck area, and then the left front. And I'm going to show you how we're going to do that. Now, now I'm going to have to pull in for this it's just so that we can see, so I can get a, you can see how I'm going to use, let's see if my hands are that too close. All right, so here we go. Here is those unworked chains. I'm at the top now. You see my little border, my three double crochet border, one, two, three. That's where I want to take a, some more yarn, nice fresh yarn, and we're going to join. We're going to join, and I'm going to go make sure that I'm in line with this first stitch right here on the edge. I'm going to take my hook, go in a place right up under the chain. I'm going to do right up under the chain to make it easier uh, to... Uh, to kind of work. All right, then I'm going to take my yarn and loop it over my hook. However you join is fine with me. I just hook mine over, then I bring both yarns through. I pull a loop through and I tighten it real tight. Now, because this is why I do it in knitting, you do it. Some people crochet over their tail. I drop my tail. Now I'm simply going to chain three. That's one, two, and three. Okay, so I've chained three. I am connected. Now I'm going to get, I'm going to stack another double crochet on top of the next one. Because I want this little border to go over. I want to stay in with the border, even though I'm going to do double crochets. But watch. Then I go over to the next double crochet. Now I have three. Just like if we were, don't worry about the tail or all these extra chains. At the end of the project, we cut some of this off and 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 just uh, follow the yarn back and and tie it off. But there's my border. Now, remember when we started, we chain one. Now I chain one, but now from this point on, we're just working double crochets. No more of the lace pattern. So on this first row, right up under the chain, I'm gonna give you this little idea of how I figured out uh, how to work it. In these large spaces like here that I can get my finger into, we're going to put two double crochets. Three will be too much because eventually it will start to make it kind of wavy. So after chaining one right here, then I'm going to go over to this next large space and just put two double crochets. This is all by sight. I'm not counting anything. Okay. Hold it up so you can see what's coming next. Now I can see there's a stitch right there or there's a little small hole that I can't get my finger through. So I will put one double crochet there. See, I, I just kind of figured this out. <laughs> and it worked. So look, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> All right, in the next little space, if I hold up, I can see extra spaces and and stitches. That's really too small for my finger, so I'm going to do another double crochet there. Can you see that? Now here's one here that I can get my finger into, so I'm going to do two double crochets. Like I said, I believe three will be too many. I believe eventually it will start to kind of ruffle up, and we don't want that. So at least two. I got to pull up some yarn. I'm going to take my time on this so you can see so you will be able to do exactly what I'm doing. The next, if I hold it up, I can see there's a small opening there. So I'm just going to do one. Only in the large ones, like here. I can get my finger in there with no problems. I'm going to put two there. So one double crochet, then two. Just slide them around. All right, there's a little tiny little stitch right there. I hope I'm bringing it close enough for you to see. I'm just going to put one in there. 
There's one. There's another small little opening, so I'm going to put one there. Then I, oh, there's another. That's a small one. I'm just going to put a double crochet. That's all we're doing. And you see how nice and flat that is? And I, I'm not overcrowding. I'm not trying to overdo. I just want some nice double crochets to lay flat. And it will work itself out. It will be just fine. Now, I'll hold it up. It's good if you hold it up so you can see. There's a large space there. So I know I definitely want two double crochets there. Just like that. All right, now hold it up again. Now I can see a small little, you can see there's a small little um, stitch there. So I'm going to do one double crochet. The next one. I don't see anything. Just kind of um, look around and see. Nope, I just see this large one. So I'm going to do two here. One, two, every one, every size. This is how you're going to work across to stop the lace so that uh, we will be able to separate the fronts, the neck and the front. Now if I pull, out, pull this up a little bit, I can see there's a little stitch there. Just one. So I'm going to put a double crochet there. Just one. Hold it up. There's a stitch right there. See, it's, it's not really big enough to put my finger in, so I want to put one double crochet. Oops. My hook dropped out. Now I move over, and if I can see any other, the only other thing I see is this now, that large one. So I'm going to put two. There's two. Go hold it up so I can see. And I see there's one here, so I'm going to do a just one double crochet. I see the large space. I'm going to do two here. I'm going to check and make sure nothing, that everything is laying flat. Doesn't matter if there's a little space between some of them because we're going to come back. We're going to do several rows, and that will close it up. All you want to do is stop the lace and make sure it's nice and smooth. Okay, let's go on. All right, right there, if I pull it down and I look, you can find a stitch. There's a little net flying around here. One double crochet. I look right there. There's a stitch there. So I'm going to put one in there. And then here's a large space here. So I'm going to do two, one, two. And then there's a, there's a space there. A stitch. I'm going to do one double crochet. And I thought about trying to put three, but what happens is then people start putting too many. And then you have to pull back and start again. Pull back, start again. Better to have just a few. So there's the next thing I see is this large. So I'm just going to do two double crochets. I kind of just decided to less is best. <laughs> okay, I hold up and I can see a stitch there. A little hole, a little space. I'm going to put one double crochet. There's one right there. So I'm going to put another double crochet here. I move my finger over. There's a large space. So two double crochets. So you can see the pattern kind of form. You can get the gist of it. All right, let me just go on. I'm pulling. Sometimes you have to pull it down to see if you can find a stitch. There's one there, so I'm just going to do one. It's small, but that one's a large space. So I'll fill it up with two double crochets. Then I'll go over, look around, pull. If you can pull something down, and you can see there, I can pull that down, and there's a space. I'm not counting or anything. This is not what's going to really determine. Okay, I go over, I see a large space, another large one, so I'm going to do two here. Two, now I move around and I see one there. Okay, but then I only see just that one, so now I see this large space. So I'm going to put two here. One, two. It's still laying flat, but it looks nice and just nice and even. Not overdone, not too many. Less is best. <laughs> Get some yarn. 
All right. Pull down or look and see if you can find another stitch. Here's one here. So I'll do one double crochet. There's one there. Now for one double crochet, but then I have this large space right there. I'm at the end now, so I have the large space. So I'm going to do two double crochets. Then I'm going to chain one to stay to keep that chain one in, in pattern. Chain one. Now go over here and I have I will end the row with three double crochets like we begin the row. So that's one. Then into the next double crochet. Oops. That's two. And then of course into the post right there. Voila. Less is best. It looks nice and even. Now let me just kind of get look in the view. Nice and even. Not roughly all. See? Alright, so now from this point, like I said, we don't have to count or anything. I want to chain one, two, three, turn the work. And of course I have my my marks. I know I'm on the wrong side, but we're just double crocheting now. That's all. Now we're going to just stack things on top of each other. I'm going to do three double crochets. Just like this. Chain one. To keep that border separated. Now I'm just going to double crochet in every double crochet across till I get to the end border. And then I will chain one and then the three double crochets. So I'll just do a few and then I will... And we're going to do till we have at least three rows of this double crochet. I may even go four. I'll see how it looks. Okay, now you had the first row. Now the second row, you see how it's closing in a little more. But I have that chain one right there so that you know there's a separation of this little three-stitch border that goes down. All right, I will see you. Uh, uh, double crochet all the way across, chain one, do the three border stitches, chain three, turn around and work your way back. I will see you on the right side again. All right. All right, so I'm back and I wanted to make sure because I had made some corrections or some changes in the original one for myself. So I wanted to come back and make sure that I give you the new change. All right, so now we're ready. Uh, when we when I left you, we had just picked up our first double crochet row. We had worked across every one, at least one row, and I showed you how to kind of figure out, like I said, I wasn't going to count, but just stitch by stitch, and I picked up a whole row of double crochet. Now I want every one, every size, including that first row we just finished, I want you to do six double crochet rows on your project. One, two, three, four, five, six. You will do six double crochet rows, all right? And then as you turn the work to come back and start the seventh row, which is where I am now, all right, we're going to stop and we're going to talk a minute. I'm going to show you because the next step is to separate to find a right side, a neck section, and a left side of our wrap. And I'm going to show you just really easy way, and I, I just redid it to make it really simple. We won't even need any math or anything. Well, not much. <laughs> okay, so on this sample, first I'll do the sample as an example. Then I'll show you my, uh, then I'll uh, tell you my numbers on my piece, on my real wrap, because, you know, a lot of you feel that is helpful to know what my uh, numbers were. So I need to know, okay. How, you know, how can I separate this now? Because we just kind of randomly picked up stitches and we double crochet back and forth. Now I have six rows. All right. Every one, every size will get three because I have an odd repeat number. That's, that's the most critical thing in my crocheting, to try to use the odd number when I'm setting up the project. Well, if I take three of those odd numbers for my center back. So here I put some little markers here on this little sample. So here's one repeat, here's the center repeat, here's the next repeat. One, two, three. 
everyone, every size, you get three repeats for your neck. It may not look like much, but I'm telling you, it's going to work just perfect. All right? So that means there are even stitches or even repeats on each side because we're taking out the odd stitches, odd repeats. All right, so in order to kind of figure out, okay, well then how, how far do I need to come in for my for one side? Glad you asked. <laughs> All right, if I lift this up, now I know this is a good ways from the camera, but I need it to so I can show you. But look right here at that um, V-stitch row. Right before I, right before my um, repeats for my neck. You see that V-stitch row? We're going to kind of use that as a marker, as a place to kind of count to. So I want you to go to the edge. When I'm counting, I always start on this edge and the opposite edge. I never kind of start randomly in the middle. I always start from your edge because your edges are correct. So I'm going to count in and see about how many stitches I have before I get to this marker. I just marked off the neck repeats just so I'll know where they are on my sample. And I came in, I went 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, not there yet, 16, 18 to this row. I don't have to go all the way to the marker, but I went to a nice row where those V stitches, can you see them? Okay, so I said 18. Now I'm going to put a mark there right up here, right in the top, to let me know not to go past that That this side is on this little sample because it's just small. I'm going to count again. Let's see, two, let's see, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen. Well, okay. Well, now if I have eighteen on this front, remember the most important thing in my crocheting is to get the front, each front equal. The neck will just be the neck. Whatever's left is the neck. So I need to side pull it over. I start on this edge. Now I'm going to count in 18 to match that side. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. And I'm going to grab a nut marker and I'm going to put it right in there. So I will not go past. So now, look. Because I have... Because I did um, use that um, odd number of repeats, I have a nice right front that's equal to the left front, and then I have a nice area section that's left for the neck. Now, these numbers are very small, but now on the reel, let me just switch real quick, and then I'll come back to this sample to tell you the next step. Okay, but on my reel wrap, for my size, I'm the large to 1x, I came in 24. I came in 24 and I probably could have came, I could probably could have gone even 26. But what I want to do is line it up with something. So I think I could have come in 26. I think I was I was in such a hurry to get this trying to get it filmed. So I'll just go ahead and say 26 if you want if I want to, if you know if that's where you're working my size. You can work over, and you see it's just about right above that row of V-stitches. doesn't have to be exact, but all I want to do is get an even number so that I can come on this side and count the same even number. So say 26. I really had 24, but 26. I should have gone maybe two more on that side. So then I'd come on this side, and I... Let me see if I'm on camera. See if I'm out. Yeah. So... I would start on this side counting in, and I'd count the same number in, put my mark, so that I will know. And what would be left would just be the neck. See? So I really could have come in like 26. Does that make sense? Every size will work the same way, and every size will get three repeats in, the, in that neck. All right, so now, now some, uh, let's go back to my sample. So now we have, yay, we have two, uh, two, two fronts that are equal, and that's all important, and whatever's left is our little neck. Okay, so now I want, since my yarn is already attached on this side, I want to start working down one front and set in a new border for that front. So, 
I've done the six rows. This is the next row. So I'm going to chain one, two, three. Now let me see if I'm in enough. I think I, I think I am because we're just double crocheting it. Okay. So now I'm just double crocheting. I'm just stacking double crochets on top of double crochets, just like this. And then when I get to that chain one space, of course, you have to stay in pattern. I kind of, wait, I lost, I got to start again here. Wait. There's a double crochet. There's one more because we have a three double cro crochet border. We will continue that. When I get to that space where I need to chain one and then continue across to my marker. Now, isn't that simple? <laughs> Let me just pull up some yarn here. This is going to be a really nice go-to little wrap, I'm telling you. You can wear this. It looks really nice. It's not dated. It, you know, it just looks just for a nice casual look. Okay. So here we go. I'm trying to double crochet up to my marker. I've already counted my stitches. And I want to go four stitches before the marker. Four. I may have gone past it. Let me check. I want to go four double crochets. There's a mark right there. I want to go one, two, three, four. Okay, when I get to that fourth double crochet right there, before the marker, I double crochet. Oops, nope, sorry. One, two, three, four. Okay. Before I go to the fourth double crochet, that's the one I'm going to skip. I'm sorry. So I get up. I have four double crochets. One, two, three, four. When I get there, chain one and skip number four right there. We're going to skip over that one because we have to make a uh, three double crochet border. So I skip over and then I do a double crochet, stacking, double crochet there, and then one more. Now, there's a border on this side that looks like this side or this edge. Does that make sense? Now when I get here, get some yarn. I'm going to chain three. One, two, three. I turn the work. When I turn the work, I'm just going to continue to double crochet. Staying in pattern. Okay, that's one, and then there's, that makes one, two, so there's the three. One, two, three. All right, then I have to chain one to get over that space. And then continue to double crochet across. I think I need to take off that ring again. I had to put some lotion on my hands. <laughs> Didn't know I had to get... It dropped down to almost 40 some degrees last night. I had to turn my... Put my electric blanket on. I got up. <laughs> well, I went to bed and I grabbed that electric blanket and plugged it back in. <laughs> I, I thought I was done. Oh, and then I think towards the weekend, it's supposed to get up to 90. Give me a break. <laughs> you think the birds don't know what to do. My hot flashing doesn't know what to do. I don't know whether it be hot or cold. <laughs> All right, so I am crocheting over two. I'm just going to do it just to make sure that you see that we're working together. I'm just stacking double crochets on top of double crochets, staying in our pattern. When I get to that space, I just chain one and then continue across. Just like this. And when I get to the edge of the last stitch, go into the post, double crochet, chain three, one, two, three, turn the work. And now I'm working back and forth. Just like that. But now look, I have a new border for the neck on this edge, and it has that little eyelet row, and it matches this border over here. 
you'll see once it's all together. Alright, so now the next thing is to do is continue to work this one. Work at least eight rows. We'll we'll I'll kind of come back after eight row after you work from this point, eight double crochet rows. One, two, three, four, all the way up to eight. And then of course, just so that you'll know, let me just pull a little yarn off of 10 over here how to connect. Over here, all you have to do is connect. I'll just pull up some yarn. I connect right here. Here's the marker. So I want to be on this side. And I, I just use some of this yarn here. I didn't cut it, but let's see, can I just use some? Okay, so here I go. So chain three, after you connect, then chain three, one, two, oops, two, two, and three, one, two, three. Then I start working back on this side. I do one double, that, that counts as a double crochet, and then number two, number three, chain one, skip one on the bottom, and continue across. Let's see if I can work a few more. Oops. Chain one, skip one on the bottom. Now we're setting this neck edge up just like the one on the other side. And just work across, back and forth, until you have at least eight rows. Count, start with this counting. One, two, three, count up to eight. All right, I will see you back shortly. I want to double check everything. And... We will join back and we'll be ready. This, you're almost there. <laughs> I'm going to show you that I did some decreasing so that the ties would narrow down. So let's get up to uh, at least eight rows and I will join you back. See you shortly. All right, so I had you to go ahead and crochet at least eight rows just to kind of get over the shoulder shoulders of your wrap. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So at least eight rows. Now listen, you have to start trying to tweak this for your for your own body. You know, I'm very short, so most people are taller than I am. So if you um you do the eight rows and you think, mm, this doesn't look like enough or you kind of put it up to you and it doesn't come over your shoulders enough, then go 10, go 12. You can go enough rows to kind of get over your shoulders. You don't, you just want to come over just to, just barely get over your shoulders. And then, of course, the next right side row, we want to start decreasing. So if eight is not enough, you know, if if eight is just fine, because you're short like me, that's fine. But if you need more, just go more rows. You can do that. You can start making decisions like that for your own body. Just remember how many rows so that you can duplicate it on the opposite uh, shoulder. Does that make sense? <laughs> I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> okay. Because you can see as we start to decrease, we're just going to do it really. And then it becomes just... Just a nice uh, tie for you to um, tie in the front. All right, so let me show you how I'm going to do it. Now, I don't know what I'm, why I was dragging my feet. <laughs> oh, I think a good movie is going to come on, and I thought, well, I'll watch a movie tonight while I'm working on something new. Oh, my gosh, I got a couple new things. All right, so for me, like I said, I'm short. So I just, and just for this practice sake, sake i've done eight rows of double crochet just plain double crochet let me check my camera on my sample here all right let's see can i go that way now the next right side row just make sure on a, you're on the right side row and then just uh, make a note of what row and then you can uh, duplicate it on the opposite side all right so i chain three turn chain three turn now i'm going to work I'm going to stack these double crochets just like we were working. I'm on the right, I'm on the right side because the wrong side is marked. I get to the space. I ch Now watch. When I get to the chain one space, I chain one. And then I go into the next double crochet right there. Now I do the first decrease. We are going to decrease 
on this side and right here when we get across on this side. So I'm going to decrease four times, but I'm going to do it twice on each right side row. Does that make sense? All together, I will decrease four times. And each time I decrease, I'm going to decrease, decrease on this side like this. After I, pa after I do that double crochet right there, then yarn over. In the next double crochet, go through and pull up a loop. Pull through two loops, stop, yarn over, go to the next double crochet, pull up a loop, pull through two, stop. Now I have three on my hook, so I pull through all three. I have just decreased one stitch. All right, now I continue to work across this row. And I'm going to work up to three stitches before that chain one space. So there, there's my three, there's my chain one space. You can see my finger there. Here's one, two, three. Three double crochets before that chain one space. Now watch. Yarn over. Go through the next double crochet, pull up a loop, pull through two, stop. Yarn over. Go through the next double crochet, pull up a loop, pull through two, stop. There are three, pull through all three. I have just decreased another stitch on this side. Now, go into this double crochet before the chain one space. See, that keeps it nice and even. Now, chain one and continue with the border. One, two, and then of course, you have to go into the post to make it three right there see can I get in there so I have I have I've decreased but I still have my little borders chain three now this is this is count you count this as one decrease we're gonna make four everyone will make four so I've just chain one two three turn the work and of course on this side you just double crochet back we are only going to decrease on the front sides. Make it easy to remember and to keep up with. And you'll be able to see the decreases because it, it'll just be every other row. Okay, so now I double crochet. I chain one to go over that space. We've got to stay in pattern. Now I continue to just double crochet across. This is the wrong side. We have just made one decrease. So let's just go ahead here. And even you can decide even on that if you'd like to go, well, Jay, I think I might want to go a little more. I might want my ties a little, uh, you know, not as wide. I want them to be on the narrow side. Okay. I'm just crocheting across because this is the wrong side. I don't have to worry about anything. Get up to that chain one space, chain one, oops, chain one, continue across with the three, last three double crochets for the border. Okay, now let's start again. Chain one, two, three, turn the work. Okay, so now we want to do decrease number two. So we work into the border. Hope I'm on camera. Chain one. All right, not in the first double crochet. I make that double crochet after that chain one space. Now, yarn over, go into the next double crochet, pull up a loop, pull through two, stop. Yarn over, go into the next double crochet, pull up a loop, pull through two, stop. Have three loops on my hook, pull through all three, and continue to crochet across. Okay, I've got to come up to the last three double crochets before that chain one space right there. 
one, two, three. Okay, I can see that I'm there. Of course, you're gonna have more, more double crochets on the real, you know, on the real wrap because I had made like 24 or 26 these double crochets. I only have a few right here, so you see I'm running out of room already. <laughs> All right, so I, anyway, so I get up to this one and uh, I yarn over, pull up a loop, pull through two, stop. Yarn over, go to the next double crochet, pull up a loop, pull through two. I have three on my hook, one, two, three, pull through all three and continue. Double crochet in the next double crochet. Now I'm staying in pattern by chaining. I chain one. And then I do the three double crochet border. It's easy to forget because I'm working right along. And But this is just a sample. Okay, let's just stop for a second. Alright, I've made another. That was decrease number two. The whole thing. Then you, of course, chain three, one, two, three, and turn the work. And then you'll work across, and then you will repeat this until you have four double, uh, four decreases. Now, you can, um, like I said, you can continue to decrease, but I only did four. I did four, so maybe if I started with um, this, I think I had... Well, I had like 24, but I, I, I could have gone down to 26. But I wound up with 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. I ended up with about 14 com double crochets. But I probably could have had 16 if I hadn't done 26. Like I, you know, like I shared. But 14, 12, 14, 18, something like that. You're going to wind up with... Uh, a nice number to continue on down this whole once you've done your com four decrease sections four times you know decrease four times then you just continue on and these ties need to be really long because you've got to kind of you know time over and then all I did I just simply stopped went back up to the opposite side before you start putting fringe and all that on Go back up to where your mark was on this one and connect, chain three, and start working the same, exactly what you did on this side. You need to work on this side, working back and forth. Then when you get ready to decrease, do the same four decreases and then continue to work on down, all the way down. All right, I'm going to stop here just to make sure, just to make sure that I have not left anything off and I'll come back with just the end and uh, you know just take a look at everything so you've got a little work to do and I will come back just to make sure I tidy up everything and that if I think of anything that I left off all right keep working well another one in the books <laughs> We've come to the end of another stash busting project and I hope you get a lot of wear and a lot of compliments for this one because it's a fun piece to crochet. It's a fun piece to wear. You can dress it up or you can dress it down either way. So, but before I show, before we put on some, uh, some of the little, um, I got some of my pins out. Let me tell you this last little tip that I wanted to make sure I shared this with you. So let's just take a little quick overview one more time. Here is as it comes over the shoulders and you see it then you decrease down to a nice little, you know, 14, 16, 18 um, double crochets. To make a nicer uh, tie at the bottom and of course I just took a crochet hook and, and I cut me some fringe and I just put your regular fringe on you now just like you normally do I just thought that was pretty to end it now let me show you this little tip though in order to get a beautiful tie one on one of your ties doesn't matter which one just one you need to crochet one tie at least four or five inches longer than the opposite tie. 
See, you need to crochet one, four or five inches, at least four, maybe five inches, especially if you're tall, so that you can get a good tie. But you'll have one tie four or five inches longer than the other tie. And this is what you do. So when you get ready to tie it, the one that is the longest, okay, the one that is the longest goes on top. Here's the short one right here. Here's the long one. It goes on top and then goes up under and through the opening right there. And then it comes over. So that's why you need the four or five extra inches on one tie. And then that way they come out, as you can see, looking pretty much, you know, like they're equal. But actually one is like five inches longer. And then, of course, let's see if I'm on. See if you can see that tie. Isn't that pretty? See how you can make it just really pretty and in the little fringe. Okay, and then, like I said, you can dress it up. You know, the J effect. <laughs> the flower. <laughs> oh. oh, and sometimes when I go out, I really do like wearing flowers. The flower effect, of course. A beautiful pin effect. Look at that. I'm going to pull in a little bit on the pin so you can see kind of the pin effect. Look at that. That's just a beautiful pin that I had. Be pretty. With, uh, you know, some specialty pin you have. Here's one with one of those uh, lobster class I, that I made some time ago. You just have to be careful not to use anything too heavy. Because it is knit, and you you know we don't want to. Well, I won't even put it on. There. I'll just pretend like I hung it there. But look at that! Even that, just a beautiful pin there. It says you have my little mark. Now I'll take that out. Once I, if you have a label, you can put it in the center back because we have a center. See, we have a center. Um, uh, repeat right there. So you'd put your label right there. You remember my, <laughs> you remember all, my old school. You remember we put buttons. <laughs> Well, that's what we had. So we'd find a little flat button about the color of the yarn in um, our dress or anything else. And we'd stick a little button there. But it's just fun. But anyway, so then you see, so that little trick about the ties, you know, making one five inches, at least five inches or so longer, so that you can get a beautiful tie and it'll come down and fall real pretty in the front. I'm going with the flower. Because <laughs> that's the way I am. Well, like I said, another one in the book, but I'm telling you, I have, I don't know what got into me. I just wanted to crochet all the things, knit all the things. I already have, I have a couple things already finished. Of course, I have to f do the filming. You know, this is the thing that takes time. Oh. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You just got to, you just have to either love it or you hate it. <laughs> because it just... It just consumes you. But, as long as I know, my friends, that you like what I'm sharing with you, that you want to give them a try, I thank you so much. It makes all the hard work worthwhile. So, from this is Jay, and this is Jay's Knit and Pearl Jam. Happy crocheting to you and you and you and you. And I will see you soon. And we will be knitting. I can't tell you what it is, but it'll be a nice surprise. So, I'll see you.